Now then, my name is Ryan Central, and remember that video that I did going over Flax 9 pet variations? We're going to do something similar with Moe's and her six gun modes. Moe's only has one skill to choose from, and that's summoning the Iron Bear Mech. However, going into the skill trees and picking certain action skills will equip specific weapons. Each of the three skill trees has an action skill right at the top that you can pick from the start of the game. But as you invest into each of the different skill trees, which we'll talk about in a bit more detail later on, you unlock different weapons. Not to mention that each of them has three augments, meaning that there's 18 gun variations that you can have at once. You can mix and match each of the gun types, but you can also run two of the same one. There's even talents that increase damage when you do that too, so certainly worth considering if you want to run two miniguns. Speaking of the minigun, let's start with that one. By the way, sorry about the camera on screen and the fact that I have no neck, apparently. I know that it's in the way of some of the skill trees and showed off some of the stuff, but this comes from the stream I did at Gamescom. The minigun is fairly straightforward. It is sustained rapid fire. You don't really have any ammo, but you do have an overheat meter. When it overheats, you have to wait for it to cool down. This is the first action skill of the bottomless max tree as you invest into it further you will unlock the salamander which is a flamethrower that deals incendiary damage if that wasn't obvious and again the salamander has infinite ammo but it drains your fuel when you use it and next up we're heading over to the shield of retribution tree the first action skill that you can get is the railgun which fires a high velocity electrified shot once it fires it goes on cooldown for a second to charge up again like you've seen on screen it's very easy to miss this and the fuel usage when not built towards it is very quick as you're seeing on screen again as you go further into the shield of retribution tree you will unlock the bare fist which is a close range attack that punches them in the face doing massive damage. Both of these skills on their own aren't as exciting as the other ones. I feel like when you use these two together, the fuel usage is massive, but like the others, you can skill into them a little bit more with the augments. And the final tree we haven't gone over yet is Demolition Woman, the first weapon being the V-35 Grenade Launcher. It's a semi-automatic grenade launcher that explodes on impact or just bobbles on the ground for a couple of seconds if you miss a target. The grenades also have a capacity of 15 which does replenish over time then you have the rocket pods which are a flurry of three little rockets that do explosive damage to a target there's 36 shots in total in the magazine but much like the grenade launcher it replenishes over time so those are Moses six basic gun modes but like I said there are augments which act as variations on these guns you can change the element, how often they fire, how much damage they do. And so we'll go through each of the skill trees again, now going over the skill augments for each of the weapons. Like I said, 18 variations in total. Some have gameplay, some don't. And we'll start again with bottomless mags. On the minigun, you have let off some steam, which deals more damage as the overheat mechanic starts to kick in, and it can be fired for longer before overheating, which is just a damage increase. You then have General Winter, which instead of firing fire rounds, it fires cryo rounds. It reduces heat gain for overheating and also your fuel drain, but it deals reduced damage, 30% less to be exact. And then the final augment for miniguns is exploding bullets. The minigun fires explosive rounds that deal increased splash damage, but the fire rate is decreased. This is really good for any builds that you have that don't require you to fire as much, but making sure that each of the shots that you hit does as much damage as possible. Exploding bullets is the one for you. For the salamander flamethrower, the first augment is fuel economy, which reduces the fuel drain from salamander, and your movement speed is increased after damaging an enemy, which is a fairly good vanilla augment if you want to run it. You then have chemical warfare as an augment which changes it from a flamethrower to an acid thrower, dealing corrosive damage, and also your melt damage is increased by 50%. But if you're going for a corrosive build, or going up against a lot of armored targets. Then you have Molten Raw, which is a burst fire free projectiles, the first of which leaves a big pile of fire, but it does increase your fuel drain. And that's in the bottomless mags tree, which we'll talk about a little later on in this video. But let's move on to the Shield of Retribution skill tree. Going over the railgun first, you have Hell on Rails, where the railgun now fires fire shots doing incendiary damage, but it does increase the fuel drain by 30%. So if you have a good aim with the railgun, unlike me, or a fire build, definitely the pick. Capacitive Amateur. When railgun hits an enemy, it chains to nearby enemies, dealing splinter damage, that is still shock but deals 75% less so great if you're running into a lot of enemies and finally corrosive sabot round the railgun does 50% less damage but it does explode after a short delay all of that damage is corrosive as well but it doesn't use up as much fuel 50% in fact 
and you get two charges with a magazine size increase. Moving over to the Bear Fist, the first one is Wild Swing. Whenever Bear Fist hits an enemy, it deals random bonus elemental damage of around 35% of the damage dealt to all of the enemies nearby. Really good again for crowd control. Close the distance. Instead of punching, Bear Fist now launches its fist towards and grabs enemy at greatly increased range, does more shock damage, and it acts like a Roadhog hook. Then finally, you have the Shock Hammer. Instead of punching once, you have sustained rapid fire punching. It uses up 40% less fuel and deals bonus shock damage with each hit. I haven't tried playing two bare fists with this, but I imagine it looks like a lot of fun. And finally, back onto Demolition Woman. How can you improve these guns further? Well, for the grenade launcher, you have Shape Charge, which increases damage when you directly hit a target by 35%. If you have good aim or are just playing really close, this is great. My favorite from playing was musical chairs. Occasionally, the V-35 fires a singularity grenade that pulls in nearby enemies before exploding. If you're doing an explosive build, trying to do as much splash damage as possible, what better way to pull people in than with your grenades, you know? And finally, you have Lock and Speed Load. The V-35's Reload speed is increased by 25% and it now fires as a five round burst. So more damage per volley and it reloads a lot faster. So just spam, spam, spam. Going over to the right hand side with the rocket pod, you have active tracking, which now fires homing rockets and has increased reload speed of 25%. You do this by holding down F and aiming at an enemy to designate up to six targets, much like a pet command for flak. Target softening. Your rockets do 74% less damage, but now they fire in a six rocket spread. Additionally, hitting enemies with the rocket pods, those targets now take increased damage from all sources. So really good for debuffing raid bosses as an example. The final argument that we have to go over is the hammer down protocol. Instead of a volley of conventional rockets, the rocket pod launches a single rocket with a nuclear warhead, dealing increased damage of 380% as well as being radiation too. So a nice big bang. Most of this stuff is fairly straightforward to get your head around. You can mix and match whatever weapons that you want. For example, you could go all the way down the Demolition Woman tree if you wanted to, but you could run the Railgun and the Minigun from the other skill trees. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that because you don't have the augments, but at level 50, you'll be able to invest into a lot more. Now I want to go over each of the skill trees and generally talk about the playstyle that you should be expecting when investing into them. We'll start with Demolition Woman, which is the most straightforward it's all about explosive damage. You can increase your grenade capacity by investing into Demolition Woman. When you deal splash damage, your action skill cooldown rate can be increased with explosive punctuation. And pull the holy pin, which is ridiculous, your grenades have a chance to score a critical hit. The capstone is short fuse. Whenever you deal gun damage, there is a chance for secondary explosion going off at 20%, which is 75% of your gun damage. And you'll see in a general playstyle on screen from the live stream that I did. It was a lot of fun. The artifacts and the weapons that were in this build didn't really complement this explosive style. But you can see how much fun it was to play and how much damage that you can do. Not to mention investing into this skill tree, you get your Iron Bear mech off cooldown quite a lot and you can be in it for quite some time too. Running into badass mobs took a while to actually kill much, but I do want to do a video going over this build in a little bit more detail some other time. But if you want to run more of like an explosive build with Torg weapons, strong grenades, being able to regen them at a rate that is ridiculous, the Demolition Woman tree is definitely for you. Shield of Retribution, this is about being as tanky as possible, both in and out of the mech. You have some really nice synergy going on between some of the skills. The first is Thin Red Line. A portion of Moses' health is reserved and cannot be restored, but her maximum shield is increased by the same amount. Like in the gameplay, your maximum health goes down to 20%, but the rest is added as a shield, and this synergizes really well with Desperate Measures. Moses' gun damage is increased depending on how low her health is. The lower her health, the greater the increase. So you have a skill that increases your damage when you're low health, alongside one that keeps you at low health, but with higher shield. The damage that you can get from the Shield of Retribution tree is pretty strong. And because you have all of these skills that increase your max shield, your recharge rate, and gun damage, you can run quite a brawly build here. Very much close range. Not to mention that you have the almighty Phalanx Doctrine, after killing an enemy, you get increased gun damage by 2% per stack and max shields at 3% per stack. The best thing about this is there's no stack limit, but each of the stacks lasts 30 seconds. So there is an ebb and flow to it, but I think this will be a really good build for leveling. The capstone is Tenacious Defense. Whenever Moses' shield is fully depleted, she instantly restores a portion of her shield and her gun damage is increased by 30% for a short time. 
but you need to fully recharge your shields before you use this again. So if you're constantly going up and down in shield, this is really, really strong, but can be very glass cannony because you're only at 20% health if you go with thin red line. Finally, you've probably seen a lot of gameplay of this one. I didn't get it myself, but I would recommend a VOD that I've linked below and shown a clip of on screen from Lazy Data, who ran the bottomless mag tree, which is all about gun ammo regen with the butcher, which is a weapon has a chance to give you some of your ammo back as you're firing. Both of these things together means that the butcher that Lazy Data was running with never had to reload once. And it's a fast firing fire shotgun, which meant that he blasted through the privy grounds in about four and a half minutes, which is ridiculous. You have the talent specialist bear, where equipping two of the same weapons on the iron bear increases the damage that they deal by 25%. Is the talent that I mentioned earlier. You have some for the road. Most gains infinite ammo for a few seconds after exiting Iron Bear. So there is a strategy of jumping into the Iron Bear mech when you're low on ammo, jumping back out and then just spamming a target with hard hitting weapons. COV guns don't overheat at all whilst you do this. So there's some nice energy there. Rushing offensive, most can sprint and shoot at the same time, which I think is really strong. And the capstone is Forge, where you constantly regenerate ammo for the currently equipped weapon. This, alongside some of the other talents that increase your regen ammo, and the butcher, makes for a pretty strong build. It was definitely the strongest build out of all of the Proving Ground stuff, but that was because of the weapons and the artifacts it really honed in on that build. And I'm pretty happy to say that each of the skill trees definitely have potential to be one of the strongest, depending on class mods, weapons, artifacts that you may have. But that's everything that I wanted to go over today, just sort of going into a little bit more detail on some of the skill trees with Moe's now that I've played a lot more of them before. Hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, do definitely like and subscribe, it really helps me out as a small channel. But thanks again for watching, take care, I'll see you very soon.